Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw News Brief. We're going to try to keep this one brief today. Quick reminder, though, uh, later on today around 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, we're going to be doing the Numbers Don't Lie on China. So be sure to subscribe over at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson at $5 a month. You can vote on that. You can check out the episode. You can watch it live. Also, if you're a Twitch sub YouTube channel member. Uh, and before we get started, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, Larson, what's in the news? What's in the news? So, uh, of course, earlier this week. Yeah. Was it this week? Last week? I don't know. Time is a flat circle right now for me. Uh, we learned that Adam Cole's contract uh, had expired. Uh, he's working on a deal. They'll take him through SummerSlam weekend. Seems like he could be a free agent very soon. Also seems like another NXT star could likewise be a free agent very soon. Fightful Select. Go subscribe to Fightful Select. Do great work over there. Is reporting that Pete Dunne's deal is set to expire very soon with one source suggesting to Fightful that it could be as soon as after SummerSlam. Though it's obviously mm, not goodness. confirmed. Um... So, you know, that'd be two potential huge losses for NXT if they lose Adam Cole and Pete Dunne. I think it'd be one huge loss for NXT and one pretty decent-sized loss for NXT. And Pete Dunne hasn't really filled the potential that we see in him in NXT Prime. They've never really seemed to want to pull the trigger fully with him. Um and obviously, he had a stellar run in UK. He was part of the foundational core of that brand. Um, but I do feel like this is one of those things. It's a shame that we never got to see like British Strong Style have a really, really, really strong run like an NXT Prime. Like I would love to see. And you never know. Pete Dunne might be the kind of guy who was like, hey, with that, if Adam Cole is leaving, that opens up another spot Entirely possible. for somebody potentially to, to fill. Um He's in sort of a position right now where, you know, they brought uh, Rich or Rich Holland came back from that pretty nasty injury and uh, and they got Oni Lorcan there with them. So it's sort of open ended in terms of exactly what he's going to do, because Holland is kind of the guy in that group now. It seems like it. Yeah, it's a little weird. I know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I you know, you and I are both huge, huge Pete Dunn oh, fans. He's, great. he's amazing. Uh, I just when I look at the landscape if he were to leave NXT, I don't know where I don't know what he'd do. You know, like it could it, would AEW take on another guy from WWE? I mean, I know it's the popular thing right now to say, oh, look, they're signing up every, everybody from WWE. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I just don't know. I, I I'm I'm sure they could find a, a good fit for him there, but. I don't know if his spot would significantly be improved yeah. in AEW than it is in NXT. I think Adam Cole's would be if if they have no plans for him on main roster, mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, AEW's a no brainer. Yeah. Pete Dunne, I don't know. I just I don't know. About well, Adam that. Cole's in a situation where he's done everything he can do in NXT at this point, you know. And yeah, if, right. And if, yeah. If, if it seems like his prospects on the main roster aren't great, then. Do you just kind of stay in NXT and kind of spin your wheels, or do you try something else? Mm -hmm, yeah. Whereas Pete Dunne, he's done everything he could pretty much do in in NXT UK. He held that title mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, on, on in NXT Prime, you know, there's still a lot for him to do. So it's entirely possible he's like, well, I'll give this another couple of years, see it through, see what happens. If still nothing works out, then way options. Then who knows? I would love to see. I mean, to be honest, I would love to see Pete Dunne in New Japan. Mm -hmm. I think that's like either Bullet Club or you know the Empire today. I don't know. Um, you know, one of those uh, one of those crews or just going solo. Uh, the, the idea of Pete Dunne in the G one is pretty awesome. That'd be pretty phenomenal. Um, so if you know me as a fan of Pete Dunne, if I would want to see him do anything, it'd be probably New Japan because I think they'd probably make the most use out of. I mean, imagine him in the kind of produced intro video that they gave Mox with his Death Rider thing. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool to see, you know? Um, so, yeah, if, if, if he were to leave, that'd be ideal. You have to ask yourself, if you're Pete Dunne, it's like, okay, are they going to do something with me? Like, they did something with me in UK, but now that I'm here in Prime, are they going to do something with me? Exactly. Um, would be the question you want to ask yourself. 
Uh, or is he just content? He's still pretty young. He's like 27, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. is he cool? Hey, you know, I, I got a couple more years before I even hit my prime. You know, and, and they've taken some time on NXT TV to set up potentially something between Pete Dunne and Samoa Joe. You got to think yeah. Samoa Joe is walking away from takeover with that NXT title. Mm-hmm. Uh, a feud between him and Pete Dunne could be some really great stuff. It could be some really great stuff. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, where does Pete Dunne go from there? Yeah. Um, you know, does he feud with Swerve for the North American title? who they obviously have big plans for for Hit Row. I don't know if Swerve's going to get rid of that title anytime soon. I just don't know where yeah, don't he know really where. fits. You know, he's always been the kind of guy who's been on the other end of, okay, well, they're going to do this with this guy. They're going to do this with this guy. But it's not ever, doesn't really seem like it's ever really been Pete Dunne since he's been to NXT Prime. And it hasn't been that long, but you got to start asking yourself, okay, what, what are your guys' plans with me, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking uh, of... Uh, NXT UK stars and former champions at the WWE Performance Center. Apparently, there is a former champion spotted at the Performance Center of late. Ooh. Steve, what is this about? Ooh, so PW Insider is reporting that former NXT UK women's champion Kaylee Ray is currently in Florida. Uh, whether she'll be appearing on WWE NXT programming stateside is unknown at this time, but we confirm Ray has been seen at the Performance Center in Orlando this week. She's also been not seen in NXT UK since she dropped her title to yeah. Mako Satamora. Again, she had that belt um, for a very long time. A very long time, yeah. Um, so I would not be surprised if she gets the call up to NXT Prime at this point. Yeah. Again, she's pretty much done everything she can do in NXT UK, uh, especially now that there's been some call-ups from the women's division, NXT to the main roster. Uh, it's uh, probably a, a good time for NXT Prime to bring someone over from NXT UK to fill out the depth of the division. That would seem to be the thing, given that they took, you know, Tegan, Shotzi, uh, Tony Storm, potentially Tony, yeah, Tony Storm. I mean, Scarlet didn't really wrestle, but they got Scarlet now, apparently. Um, so, yeah. And then who knows how this uh, uh, Raquel Gonzalez, Dakota Kai thing would sort itself out. But, you know, the story there is basically Raquel has said there's nobody left to challenge me. So this would be a big name if they if they spend a couple months, maybe. Uh, if Dakota Kai gets that title off Raquel, they spend a couple months to get it back on Raquel, mm-hmm. winning that feud eventually. Kaylee Ray comes in sooner than later and takes out a bunch of you know smaller feuds. Maybe it takes on a bunch of smaller feuds uh, to get her to the point uh, to Raquel Gonzalez. They're going to want Raquel Gonzalez on main roster sooner than I would not shock me one bit if in October mm-hmm. Raquel ended up on main roster it's via the draft. Possible. Wouldn't possible. shock me at all. So Kaylee Ray, I think she could be a killer, you know, next in line for that NXT Prime mm-hmm. Women's Title. I could mm-hmm. totally see that. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, speaking of NXT UK, we watched that today, and oh wow, what oh a main gosh. event! Thirty minute my Iron God. Man match between A Kid and Jordan Devlin. Uh, just you know, you, you worry with the thirty minute Iron Man match or any sort of Iron Man match, whether it's an hour or thirty minutes. That it's gonna, there's gonna be lulls in the action. That wasn't the case with this. At mm-hmm. no point was there not something happening that had a direct bearing on on the outcome of the match. It could have been two minutes in or twenty eight minutes in. Everything they did in this match had a direct bearing in terms of the finish of the match. It was pretty outstanding. It was like three mini stories told perfectly within a larger story, mm-hmm. and it got to a point at the end when you're just sitting there like. It's almost like, you know, a horror movie. You're just telling a kid, hey, dude, just 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 hang in there. Just hang in there. Just hang in there. And they're giving headbutts, accidental headbutts, just striking each other till they're laid out. And then the finish, the last three minutes or so was the perfect amount of intentionally sloppy because they've gone through a a battle for the preceding 27, 28 minutes. They can barely stand up at this point. And they're just doing like short little strikes, kicks, just making contact with anything, with any sort of uh, force behind it, covering, try to get an easy, quick pin. It was really, mm-hmm. really well done. The, the the desperation at the end, especially from Jordan Devlin, trying to get that last last strike or last blow on A-Kid that could maybe uh, help him tie it up was pretty well done. Everything from top to bottom just like perfectly executed here. This was a brilliant, brilliantly told story, and uh, it's, it's on my short list of match of the year candidates because it was just – I mean, I couldn't imagine this in front of a crowd. Oh, man. You know, this would have been just electric in front of a crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, NXT UK is really putting together. When they when they, when they they build to a big match, they are on par with the best wrestling on the planet. They yeah, really yeah, yeah. are. And this 
I'm telling you, uh, Takeover 36, Walter versus Ilya, it's going to be a match of the year candidate. Oh, yeah. I, I'm telling you, I, I will not be so- shocked if that ends up being my match of the year. It's entirely uh, possible. But, like yeah, at, NXT UK is one of those is one of those things, and it's kind of been that way from the beginning, where whatever's the main of the event of the show is usually really really good, and usually has a decent amount of story behind it. Is the undercard stuff like someone will bump into somebody, a match will happen because of that. You know, a lot, so often feuds are motivated by the smallest little things, or even matches are motivated by the smallest little things. And sometimes it's funny, it's entertaining, it's and stuff. But when they actually invest time to build up a story. That's meaty. That's got something to it beyond just, you know, a little interaction where people get upset with each other. Uh, they can deliver some really good stuff like this main event. This top notch stuff. They can. And I mean, I, I really enjoy our UK streams on Thursdays because there is, you know, getting to know the characters is kind of the thing. You know, mm-hmm. there's a charm. Number one, it's only an hour long. Um, and the charm is in the characters. But you know, you're absolutely right. It's not a story heavy uh, uh, show. Um, but you know, there are all sorts of wonderful little quirks, uh, about it. It's a really charming, it's a really charming show and, and, and it does, it can deliver some really spectacular wrestling. I mean, Mako Satamore is one of the best wrestlers on the planet and she's mm-hmm. their women's champion and, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's really good stuff. Yeah. Uh, show kicked off with Zaya Brookside versus Blair Davenport. Uh, Blair pretty much dominated the vast majority of this match. Uh, end up hitting a Kamagoye at the end to get the win, and then afterwards hits Zaya with like a kind of a Falcon arrow, but also kind of a Steiner screwdriver looking thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. The, after after the match. Yeah. Uh, we also had a Mustache Mountain interview that was aired from last week after their uh, uh, match against um, Symbiosis. Uh, the, the Symbiosis, yeah. And then Pretty Deadly interrupts that. They're in the hallway. They challenge them, Mustache Mountain, gleefully accepts and then uh, speaking of tyler Bate, the heritage cup champion uh sid scala announced a tournament for a new number one contender for his heritage cup uh and so that's going to kick off i think probably next week yeah eight man field uh yes. and then we get a isla dawn video package she's out in the woods there's like a little box or something in the, in the dirt and she pulls something out of it Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all I kind of remember. It was well, yeah. it was well, it was well produced though. And then we got a, a subculture interview, and then Flash Morgan Webster notices what Wolfgang is just doing something, and goes up, says, "Hey, the stuff that you and, and Mark Coffey have been doing, you know, like challenging people, this, this kind of one-upsmanship between Wolfgang and Mark Coffey is pretty genius." Slap, just slap, slap Wolfgang across the face, and then sprints out of there. <laughs> Wolfgang was shocked. Shocked. Did yeah, not expect was. that to happen. Did not. That's going to be good. Uh, we had Danny Jones and Josh Morrell taking on the new tag team of Jack Stars and Dave Mastiff. We're going to see if all that hard work in the gym, in the PC, paid off. And, in fact, it did. Mastiff picked up the win for his team with a cannonball on Josh Morrell. Yep, yep. Uh, then we got Amel. She's getting her makeup done. And then Nina Samuels just walks in and starts talking a bunch of trash. Yeah. Uh, they start you know, arguing with each other, and then uh, ref come, refs come break it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a uh, uh, Valkyrie promo, talking uh, sort of a response to Jenny's promo from last week, and then we had a small bit in the Performance Center when Stevie Turner walks up to Mako Satamora and says, uh, who his, is teaching a couple of the students there, says, there's nothing you can teach them that... Uh, that, 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 that that I can't. That's what That Stevie I Turner's. couldn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then she sort of pokes at her, Mako grabs her hand, and, then, and she's like, ow, ow, that hurts. And then Mako lets go, and she says, you should be as scared of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, then we had our main event, A-Kid versus Jordan Devlin. Uh, first fall happened about 10 minutes in. Uh, Devlin had been working A-Kid's leg, puts him in a clover leaf. A-Kid taps. Devlin's up one nothing. And then about 10 minutes later, roughly, uh, A-Kid is working over Devlin's arm, puts on a cross-arm breaker. Devlin taps. It's tied 1-1. Uh, I mean, this this listing off the falls here really do, does a disservice to the stories leading up to each fall. This is really something mm-hmm. you have to watch and appreciate. So uh, towards the end, uh, Devlin uh, taps out to to A Kid's finish, and it's great. There's this really great sequence where uh, so uh, A Kid's knee is obviously compromised based on the injury that Jordan caused to it weeks back. back plus the, the the damage he incurred during this match, where he's having a hard time lock on his locking on his finish. Eventually gets it in. 
Devlin has to tap, so now Aikid is up 2-1. And from that point on, it was just like, I'm throwing whatever I can out here quick like to try to get a quick fall. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so there's yeah. all these little quick like jab forearms, especially from Devlin. He's just trying to get a shot in and, and get a cover. He gets a forearm on on uh, Aikid, covers with like two seconds left, and as the ref counts one, time expires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so oh, Aikid gets the win. God. Man, yeah, that was that was solid just stuff. Good storytelling, perfectly paced too. Just perfectly yeah, paced. Absolutely. Uh, we got an Impact Wrestling tonight. Uh, well, we don't. It's not going to be on our Twitch because they stopped doing that. Uh, but we will be going live on Twitch at the usual time of five o'clock for an emergency meeting of the Going In Raw government to discuss the futures mm -hmm. of Thursday nights on Twitch. But if you plunk down a dollar. Uh, uh, over there at Impact's YouTube channel, you yeah, can you watch can, the show. You can watch Impact, yeah. And or if you have access, uh, if you're one of the 50, you know, homes in America that has access, you can see me watch watching. it there as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't have it, which is weird. Yeah, you got uh, Kenny, <laughs> Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers <laughs> versus Eddie Edwards. Yeah, yeah. Sammy Callahan and Frankie Kazarian. Uh, uh, Chris uh, Bay versus. No, do you want to say Ju Chris? Chris, Chris Bay. Bay. There you go. <laughs> versus Juice Robinson. Uh, Fire and Flava versus Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. Man, I think this is the episode that Kayla makes her appearance in the Impact Zone because apparently she said that Chris Bay, Chris Bay, did something with his intro with his entrance where he like stood next to her and she got a bunch of screen time. But we're not gonna see her in the Impact Zone now. I have to plunk down that dollar, make a gif out of it. Uh, uh, we got Fire and Flava versus Jordan Grace yeah. and Rachel Ellering. And then Jake Something versus Davari versus Rohit Raju versus Trey Miguel. Uh, yeah, so uh, I imagine it's probably going to be a fun impact tonight. I know. <laughs> I wish we could watch it in the in the usual means we used to watch it. but I don't like change. I don't like change. The universe is telling us otherwise. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll roll. We'll roll. Exactly. With it. Exactly. Anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you'll join us for the numbers don't lie uh, in a couple hours from now. Yep. Thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. <laughs>